Good evening and welcome to the Wallingford Public Schools Board of Education meeting for Monday, November 22nd, 2021. Call this meeting to order at 6.35 p.m. And the first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand as you are able for the pledge. Mrs. Lavelle, may we please have a roll call? Yes. Mrs. Allenson? Here. Mrs. Costelli? Mrs. Here. Sorry. Mrs. Corso? Ms. Levesque? Here. Mrs. Purcell? Here. Mrs. Raccio? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Ross? Here. Mr. Votto? Seven members present and voting. Thank you, Mrs. Lavelle. The next order of business is the student board representative reports from Lyman Hall, Aaron Chiaffi. Good evening. Uh, there are a few updates from the College and Career Center. Um, college rep visits just wrapped up at Lyman Hall. Um, many students attended each one, which will help make the college decision much easier for them. Um, sophomores are being surveyed for their career choice for Credit for Life, which is an event sophomores attend um, to see what it is like to live financially in the real world. And on December 14th, the College and Career Center is organizing an on-site decision day. Seniors can attend this event in order to find out early if they were accepted to certain Connecticut State Colleges. Um, Student Council planned Community Day, and it was executed on November 11th, which was Veterans Day. Um, it turned out to be an ex a success, and we ended up with more volunteer groups than we had houses, so some groups were assigned to rake um, leaves at the school, and the senior, senior citizens were very appreciative of these groups and enjoyed having small conversations um, with the group that was assigned to their house, socially distanced, of course. Um, recently at the school, everything has really been about powder puff. Um, Saturday, November 20th, was the alumni game, which was held at Lyman Hall. Um, Spirit Week at our school started on November 18th and will continue until November 24th, which is game day. Uh, many students have been participating in these school spirit days, which has brought a lot of energy back to the school, especially with how it was last year. Um, tomorrow we have Jersey Swap Day um, between the Powder Puff Girls and their teacher who they chose to represent them. And then the 24th, which is game day, is the school colors to represent Lyman Hall Pride. Um, motorcade will be held Tuesday, November 23rd, starting at 6 p.m. The senior powder puff players will be driven around town as people are lined up along the route cheering for them. Um, the pep rally is going to be held in the morning of November 24th. It is going to be on the Lyman Hall turf, and all the students will be socially distanced outside on the bleachers. Um, November 24th is the 50th annual powder puff game at Sheehan. Tickets are already selling out fast like usual, and it should be a fun competitive day for the town. Lastly, I know they're being recognized tonight, but I just wanted to give a big congratulations to the Lyman Hall Band. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. I just wanted to share uh, and take this opportunity to share a recent experience that I had that I want the public and um, the other folks in the schools to know about. On the morning of Sunday, November 7, 2021, I accompanied a Vietnam combat veteran to a special Elks Club breakfast for veterans. Members of the Lyman Hall High School Powder Puff team were also present at the Elks Club. These students honored our veterans by lining up and applauding each veteran as they entered the club, escorted them to a table, and assisted in serving them breakfast. Some members of the team provided a beautiful a cappella rendition of the national anthem. I share this experience with you to illustrate how blessed we are to have caring, respectful students willing to share their time and talent in our community. So kudos to that team. Uh, the next report will come from Mark Tishian, Paul, and Isha. Good 
Good evening, everyone. So November has been an eventful month for the students at Shein, and we're all excited and ready to celebrate Powder Puff this Wednesday. And Spirit Week has kicked off, and we're continuing with themes such as Jersey Day, Pajama Day, Red, White, and Blue Day, and School Colors Day on the day of the game. As for what has happened this month, we held our annual homecoming dance outside on Saturday, November 6th. The Shein Dramatics Art Society also presented their fall production called All Together Now on November 13th and 14th. All Together Now was a musical produced in conjunction with the Music Theater International, celebrating the return to live theater across the country. Shein Student Council sponsored their annual scanned food drive, and we also held our annual leaf raking event on Veterans Day, in conjunction with other service clubs such as Crew and Environmental Action Club. We're also planning to hold our annual Toys for Tots gift drive for families in need during the holidays. SAD and Positive Impact Clubs held Random Act of Kindness Week, last week to promote a positive school climate. DECA also opened their first official school store recently in preparation for the Spirit Week festivities. Students are able to purchase apparel and other spirit gear, and our National Honor Society held its induction for the newest members on November 10th. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the um, student representatives. This is a very important um, job that they have to keep the board informed about what's going on at both of our high schools, and we truly, truly appreciate it. Okay. Paul? Oh, Paul. Did you have something? No, okay. All right, thank you. Um, the next order of business is presentation and awards. So. Uh, Superintendent Belizzi. Yes, we're going to start with the recognition of the students who were nominated for the U.S. Presidential Scholars Program. And to begin that, I'm going to invite um, the principal of Lyman Hall High School, Mr. Joe Corso, and the principal of Mark T. Sheehan High School, Mr. Enzo Zacco, to present these awards to our students. All right, thank you everyone, thanks for having us. Uh, Elena, if you wouldn't mind coming on up first. I'm gonna really make you feel awkward and stand right here while we read some nice words about you. So Elena is our first U.S. Presidential Scholars Program nominee for the CTE component. Elena Bielish uh, has been a driven and focused since she arrived at Lyman Hall High School just four short years ago. And it really feels like four short years with the impact that COVID has had and uh, the craziness. Uh, and her attention to detail through all of this has just remained consistent and tremendous. She's taken advantage of every opportunity here at Lyman Hall and consistently challenges herself by taking the most demanding program of study we offer. In addition to her academic accomplishments, Elena is an active member, and this is gonna take me a minute, but of the National Honor Society, the Gay Straight Alliance, Latin Club, Art Club, Ski Club, American Sign Language Club, Best Buddy Program, Unified Theater, Crew, and the United Girls Choir, just to name a few. In her spare time, she participated in, is, and is our senior captain for the Lyman Hall swim and dive team, where she made SEC all academic team, as well as being honored as a record journal scholar athlete. If you were to ask her teachers how they would describe Elena, it might sound something like this. Elena is, genuinely, is a genuinely good person with an incredible, incredibly strong work ethic, high levels of commitment and dedication, and the utmost integrity. Elena consistently impressed me with her ability to analyze situations at a level far beyond her peers. Elena is one of the most impressive students I have taught in my entire career in education. Elena will be missed when she leaves Lyman Hall, but has had a lasting impact on everyone who's had the pleasure of getting to know her over the past four years. Thank you for everything you do for Lyman Hall, Elena, and congratulations. And, and as you all, you're all aware, just so I could explain away my attire, this is a, our, our faculty powder puff jersey. Um, we say it's a, a really a week-long spirit week, but at Lyman Hall that week turns into a month. It's a very nerve-wracking uh, time for me personally, because um, the kids are uh, you know, usually off the charts crazy during this uh, experience. Uh, but uh, to just echo what Aaron said, it really has brought Lyman Hall back to life over the last few weeks. We really needed this. Uh, it's a kind of a return to normalcy, um, and it's, it's been really fantastic. So uh, just so you know why I'm wearing my jersey, 
um, to support the girls and uh, the boys on Thanksgiving Day. It'll be wonderful. Uh, our next nominee is Faith. Faith, can you come on up? Uh, Faith uh, Nyholt is here uh, and is a worthy candidate for the U.S. Presidential Scholars Program Career and Technical Education component. Faith plans on pursuing a career in architecture and has done a wonderful job during her time as a student at Lyman Hall, aligning her coursework with her future career goals. Faith has been steadfast in her desire to, uh, excuse me, her desire and pursuit of learning as much as possible in her field of interest. She's currently enrolled in advanced CAD design as well as advanced drafting and design, two of our CTE offerings, which have prerequisites she opted to take in previous years. Faith has also chosen to take 3D art and design, as well as entrepreneurship, in the off year when the CTE options were not available. Faith was nominated by her CTE teachers for this recognition thanks to her creati creativity and diligence. Faith has a bright future ahead of her as she graduates high school and moves on to pursue her dream degree in architecture. She has the motivation, dedication, and determination to meet all her goals. She's been an asset to the Lyman Hall CTE program, no doubt, and will go on to be a very successful leader in her field. The Lyman Hall community recommends Faith very highly for consideration in this honor. So thank you, Faith, and congratulations. Legacy, Legacy to come on down, Brennan. Brennan Legacy is a senior at Sheehan High School. He is the U.S. Presidential Scholarship uh, Program nominee for Sheehan. Uh, the award is based on involvement and service in, in the school and in the community, leadership and character, academic achievements, and extraordinary achievements. And I can confidently say that Brennan has excelled in all of these categories. He is the class of 2022's top academic performer, performer as the valedictorian of the class. He is an intelligent, motivated young man who demonstrates responsibility and maturity. As an eighth grader, he would come to Sheehan from Iran one period a day to take geometry because he took algebra with great success in seventh grade. As a result, he surpassed our math offerings, uh, taking AP Calc 1 and 2 during his junior year. Therefore, as a senior, he enrolled in multivariable calculus at John Hopkins Center for Talented Youth. Very impressive. Brennan's exceptional math skills complement his future co college major as he wishes to pursue uh, one in the areas of computer science and artificial intelligence. As a valedictorian of the class of 2022, an AP scholar with distinction, and a national merit semifinalist, Brennan has taken full advantage of all of his educational opportunities available to him throughout his high school career. And he is ready to move on to the next challenging, to a challenging collegial environment where he will continue to immerse himself in opportunities to extend his learning even further. Complementary to his academic excellence, Brennan is also a, a very involved member in our school community. He demonstrates leadership in his role as a senior class treasurer, co-president of the deba debate club, vice president of the National Honor Society, and as president of STEM, mock trial, and the math teams. In addition, in addition to his extensive leadership, what sets Brennan apart is his passion for technology. He serves as the lead programmer on a robotics team. He designs and programs robots that compete very successfully in many competitions. Brennan has extended his passion for innovation and programming through his volunteer work as well, designing and building software and systems for college effort, excuse me, for soccer training. For Brennan, many, these many roles and experiences provide an opportunity to make a difference. This humble young man is a worthy applicant for the U.S. Presidential Scholarship nomination. We wish him well in the process of potentially moving forward as a Connecticut finalist and beyond at the national level as well. We also wish Brennan well in his post-secondary plans. Congratulations. On behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to our nominees for the U.S. Presidential Scholars Program, Elena, Faith, Brennan. We are very, very proud of you.
next item is recognition of students who received the National School Development Award for Academic Growth and Student Leadership in Learning. Since I'm up at the mic, we'll just do the Sheehan ones. We'll start, we have two from each school. So um, the National School, why don't we call both students up? So we have Paul Burkett and Raj Patel, come on up. Come on up. Start with Paul. Raj, if you can kind of tolerate going with the Lyman Hall guy for a little while, that'd be good. You You'll be up in a sec. All right. Thank you, everyone. The National School Development Council Award for Academic Growth and Student Leadership is bestowed upon two deserving seniors who have consistently pursued a high level of academic effort and who have served as a positive role model for the student body. Recipients exemplify admirable character and accomplishment. She and seniors Paul Burkett and Raj Patel are our very two deserving seniors who have been chosen for this prestigious award. We'll start with Paul. Paul is an intelligent, charismatic, and ambitious young man. He is, he is a dedicated and award-winning student athlete and an active member of our school community. Academically, Paul is a salutatorian of the class of 2022, an incredible accomplishment in a very competitive class. He has achieved high honors throughout his high school years and is, is, has earned numerous academic awards across many of his courses that he has taken, and he continues in his senior year to take many rigorous courses. Perhaps most impressive, Paul has mastered the ability to balance student life and extracurricular activities. He serves as the captain of the track team and has broken school records and has had state recognition as a, as a result of his extraordinary athletic talent. He has been highlighted by the Record Journal as a scholar athlete. Paul also balances his academics and athletics with service to his school community. He serves as the student council president, head of research at the, of the Sikorsky STEM team, uh, is National Honor Society activities chair, Sheehan Powderpuff chair captain, DECA vice, vice president, Interact treasurer, and member of many other clubs. He also serves as the Sheehan student co-representative to the Board of Education, so he's familiar to everybody here, providing updates and highlights of student life at Sheehan High School to the board for the last two years. After graduation, Paul will pursue post-secondary post plans with a focus on computer science and economics. Congratulations, Paul, on this well-deserved recognition as the NSDC award recipient. Come on over, Raj. This is Raj Patel, our other NSDC award recipient for Sheehan. Raj is an exceptional student. He is intelligent, determined, and motivated to learn and serve his school and community. He has consistently achieved high honors throughout his years at Sheehan and is an AP scholar. His awards and achievements are extensive. Raj's dedication to community service is truly second to none that I've ever seen in all my years doing this job. He has won the Prudential Spirit of Community Award as well as the President's Volunteer Service Award for his countless hours and efforts of community service. These are two incredibly selective and prestigious awards given to students who stand out for their service. And Raja's recognition for these service awards um, is reflective of his generosity and care towards others. Some examples of this community service include his service as a member, a student member on our advisory board, helping to create engaging and meaningful, meaningful advisory activities in the past for the benefit of our school community and taking an active role in leading those activities within his own advisory classroom. Outside of school, he has volunteered at several healthcare facilities and has served as a member of the Youth and Social Services Peer Advocates Group, accumulating hundreds upon hundreds of hours of community service for various worthy causes. Raj also has a passion for technology and innovation. He is very active in STEM programs such as robotics and the Sikorsky STEM team competing against other dedicated students from across the state that have passion for STEM as well. Raj is also a member of the math team, student council secretary, National Honor Society treasurer, Spanish club, debate club, and Asian American club. Raj is also a Sheehan athlete. He is a proud member of the boys soccer and tennis teams, setting an example of sportsmanship and leadership for his teammates. After graduation, Rob, Raj will pursue post-secondary plans in the area of medicine potentially as an orthopedic surgeon. Congratulations, Raj, on this well-deserved recognition as the NSDC Award for Surgeon.
right, Gianna and Peace, if you guys can head on up here. Gianna, you'll be first. All right, uh, so our two nominees for this award of academic growth and student leadership and learning uh, from Lyman Hall are Gianna Draghi and Peace Lopez. Uh, Gianna is an outstanding student who's demonstrated excellent achievement by maintaining high academic standard, participation in sport, clubs, as well as leadership involvement at Lyman Hall High School. She sets personal goals of high academic performance without compromise. She has an outstanding worth ethic, an inquisitive nature, which has contributed to her pursuit of excellence. Gianna currently ranks third in her senior class. She's been awarded honors such as the AP Scholar and Certificates of Excellence in Latin, French, and Geometry. She has earned a distinction on high honor roll for six consecutive terms at Lyman Hall. Not only is Gianna an exceptional student, uh, academic student, she's also been a strong member of our student leadership body. She's maintained positions on our student council as a representative and treasurer for several years. She's currently captain of our girls tennis team, who's also taken a lead in many, many community service activities. We're very proud of Gianna and look forward to seeing her making a great contr contribution to the community and the world as she moves on past Lyman Hall. Congratulations, Gianna. Peace Lopez, she was a, I almost played on my phone her music, but I thought that would, might really, I didn't want to really embarrass her up here. But for those of you that are looking, she does have some music out there and it's actually pretty tremendous. Uh, Peace is a true leader and role model at Lyman Hall High School, not only with her positive and uplifting attitude, but also with her commitment to challenging academics and the variety of activities she participates in. As a leader in unified theater, she displays patience when working with her peers and shares with them her passion for the arts as they work together to create a theatrical production. Her artistic talent is also visible in the creation of her EPs, uh, which she started creating produce, and producing during the pandemic. Peace used this opportunity to teach herself a skill and created songs that promote unity and positivity, which is very much needed during such a trying time in the world right now. Peace wanted this message in her songs to reach farther than those that know her, and she worked hard to get her songs streaming on popular music platforms. This is not the first time that Peace's determination has been visible in such a large way. Her dedication to her physical fitness was displayed on national television as she competed in the American Ninja Warrior Junior. After intense training, Peace competed with other top athletes across the country. Peace strives to consistently better herself and those around her and her contagious enthusiasm for life will be missed at Lyman Hall when she graduates. Never has a name been more fitting for an individual. Peace truly has a rare ability to brighten dark days and provide peace and comfort to all around her. Thank you for everything you brought to Lyman Hall, Peace, you will be missed. On behalf of the Board of Education, Congratulations to our National School Development Award for Academic Growth and Student Leadership and Learning Award winners. Gianna, Peace, Paul, Raj, we applaud your high levels of academic achievement, your leadership abilities, and your positive example as role models for all students. Once again, congratulations. Next order of business is recognition of Lisa Dukas and her performance of earning a rare perfect score on an advanced placement exam for U.S. government and politics. All right, so about a month ago or so, I got a very surprising and unique email that I've never ever gotten before, and it was um, about Lisa. Lisa, as a freshman last year in May, in May took her AP uh, government, uh, American government uh, exam. American government politics exam. And uh, the email was from the college board and it, it said some amazing things about her performance on that. So I will just quickly read to you um, what I got. And again, I had never gotten something like that and probably never will again. So um, here we go. Uh, I wanna recognize the extraordinary accomplishment of Lisa Dukas, a, a Sheehan sophomore who not only achieved the highest score of a five on our US government politics exam, 
but was only one of 31 students in the entire world to earn every possible point for a perfect score on an AP US government and politics exam. And as a freshman, so I'd be curious how many freshmen there were, probably none I would think. Uh, not only is this an incredible achievement, but Lisa achieved this remarkable score uh, when she tested again as a, you know, late in her freshman year. Lisa's accomplishment is clearly a reflection of her intelligence, dedication to her academics. As a sophomore, Lisa is already a well-rounded, successful, and um, active student at Sheehan. She is consistently on the high honor roll. She is also a member of the mock trial team, stage crew, environmental club, the debate club, the Gus Robotics, and the Gus of Robotics organization. She is currently taking an AP World History class as a sophomore, so maybe we'll be back here next year to celebrate <laughs> another perfect score. Congratulations on this amazing. Lisa, on behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations on earning that rare perfect score on the advanced placement exam for U.S. government and politics. What an achievement. We are so very proud of you. Next item of business is recognition of the Dag Hammersfield Middle School Cross Country Team, winners of the Connecticut Large School Division State Meet at the Cross Country State Championship. Yes, at this time, uh, I'd like to invite up the coaches of this team, uh, which we have Mr. George Pakakis and Dave Palmer, who have led this team to their victory. So if they can come on up and share, that would be great. And we also have the principal of DAG, Mr. Todd Snyder, is up to share. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, George Bakakis from Dag Hammerschuld. I'd like to call up the following gentlemen. Aaron Rich, Ethan Rich, Xavier Laudati, Raiden Delavecchio, Quinn Murphy, Mario Di Natale, and Joey Girla. Come on up, boys. So we've had a unique uh, year this year, uh, knowing the fact that cross country, uh, we, we didn't get to play last year due to COVID. Um, however, this year uh, we had a very strong team, both uh, the boys and girls did amazing. Uh, the girls had a 5-2 record, winning record this year, and the boys team had a um, undefeated record. Uh, we are also league champions. Uh, so congratulations on that. And Coach Palmer is going to say the rest. Um, I just want to congratulate the gentlemen. The most important thing about this group is that we didn't have one dominant runner. Um, usually teams have a person that places in the top five if they win a state championship. But this group, every single day, pushed one another. And um, our top three were all within the top 20. Uh, so that's the most impressive thing. I think that it was the group pushing each other to do the best they could every day. And that led to team success. And um, it really was a positive thing, because I think last year we could have really done some damage at the state meet, but you kind of took your potential and did it in the eighth grade year, which is great for all the guys that came in in sixth grade so little, and now you guys are state champs in eighth grade. That's an amazing accomplishment. It hasn't been done in 20 years at DAG, and we're very, very uh, happy that you guys have done this massive, massive accomplishment this year. Congratulations, gentlemen. On behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to our um, DAG Hammersville Middle School Cross Country Team, the winners of the Connecticut Large School Division State Meet at the Cross Country State Championship, Aaron, Ethan, Xavier, Braden, Quinn, Mario, Joey, 
We are blessed with great athletes in our town. Congratulations. Our next group of awardees, we're going to have recognition of the Lyman Hall High School Band and Color Guard for the outstanding accomplishment of being named Connecticut State Champions, New England Champions, and coming in second place for Class 3A in the National Championships and National Champion Guard. Good evening, everybody. Um, first, I want to thank Superintendent Belize and the Board of Education for recognizing the incredible work that the Lyman Hall Band and Color Guard students, parents, and staff have done this fall. Uh, COVID has undoubtedly had a major impact on instruction in all subject areas, but music programs throughout the country were hit like no other. Band instruction is based on ensemble skills and teamwork. We found that band through a computer is simply not band. The, this idea alone is why I think the Lyman Hall students and parents are heroes. Not only did they stick with band through the toughest of times, but they came back and accomplished the unlikely, if not the impossible. They brought band back to the community of Wallingford and they did it with fury. I wanna quickly give some statistics that our students had, overcome to, to, had to do to overcome a year like this. Um, across the country, high school and college bands have lost 30 to 50% of their normal, normal enrollment. Although I know we will bring numbers back up quickly, unfortunately, we were not an exception to the stat. Just sticking with band when you can't play together is, is the first remarkable accomplishment for these kids. Lyman Hall students lost 11 of the normal 14 performance opportunities in 2020. Our active parent involvement, which is vital to our success, was down by 75% with a loss of 16 plus community events that are normally run, run by the music parents. But the most staggering stat to me is that in 2020, each Lyman Hall student lost 19,440 minutes of after school instruction. This is each student and is outside of the school day. It doesn't include any lost time due to COVID restrictions during the school day. Bands throughout the country have faced these same statistics and challenges. Our students chose not to only stick through band, uh, with band through COVID, but decided that they would come back and perform the best marching band performance that Lyman Hall has ever seen, absolutely. These students performed for thousands of people and performed for over 35 different professional musicians and performers that drove or flew in from all over the country to judge them and provide comments like, I wish Charming was, one, was on the score sheet because this show is so charming, it is also so solid, or very tasteful. Or, I know I'm using the word nice a lot, but that is just where you are right now. Everything is just working for you very well. Or, uh, wow, that was breathtaking, a very memorable show. Or my favorite, I need to be talking more, but I'm getting caught up in what you're doing. It's very entertaining. These are the comments, some of the comments, the many comments through the season from September 16th, our first competition until November, that we received from national judges that know um, a thing or two about marching men. These judges, as well as thousands of, thousands of spectators throughout the year, went home to their families and talked about the Lyman Hall Band and Wallingford's music program. I'm so proud of these students, and I know that their performances deeply affect those that watch them. I know people around the state and country are talking about the Lyman Hall Band, and I know that their performances have even caused families to enroll their children in Wallingford schools to participate in the Lyman Hall Band. <laughs> students, your impact to the Wallingford community is immeasurable, and I wanna thank you, say thank you, for taking this band to the next level. More importantly, thank you for doing it with class and kindness, and congratulations on an outstanding year. Great job. I just want to rec uh, recognize the students in Lyman Hall Band. Uh, you guys can stay there. I'll, I'm going to give this, there's a lot of them, so I'll give them out to the, you can stand if you, if you would like. That would be great if you're here. Antonia Alvarado, Angelica Avila, Jesus Avila, Andrew Bakioki, Timothy Berger, Hayden Bao, Megan Bell, Owen Boucher, Daniel Carbone, Michael Chase, Alyssa Clark, Cattell Colvin, 
Ryan Decker, Luca Delusha, Kyle Denson, Pablo Dominguez Solez, Morelia Dominguez, Kevin Wong, Arnisa Alevli, sorry, Arnisa, Libby Ferriola, Kevin Frost, Christopher Garcia Zambrano, Maya Garlic, Leslie Gaspar, Isabel Gravel, Emerson, Colin Hench, Alex Luba, Parth, Joe Goncar, Sam, Samuel Lopez, Junwen Lopez, Mackenzie Marquardt, Jacob Marone, Joseph Marone, Ellie Mar Martinez, Michael Mastriani, Joseph Mazzaferro, Colleen McBride, James McGovern, Kayla McGovern, Mackenzie McMahon, Robert McMillan, Kayla McManus, Jessica Merchant, Stephanie Merchant, Cooper Michael, Sean Mismas, London Murray, Shana Nauman, Emily Perez, Nathaniel Pitchford, Gloria Prorock, Karime Ramirez, Zanera Raza, Thomas Robeson, Alex Sabo, Hannah Sweeney, Jennifer Venegas Ambrosio, Casey Wong, Olivia Wallach, Mallory Whitmore, Richard Yang, and Grady Euchre. Is there anybody here that I missed? All right, congratulations, Lyman Hall Band. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delavecchia. On behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to the Lyman Hall High School Band and Color Guard for their outstanding accomplishment of being named Connecticut State Champions, New England Champions, and coming in second place for Class 3A in the National Championships and National Champion Guard. Congratulations for these stellar achievements, especially during the challenges of the COVID pandemic we are so proud and privileged to have such gifted and talented students in the performing arts. Congratulations. Madam Chair, can I say a word? Uh, Madam Chair, oh, sorry. can I say a word? You're usually over on the other side. Yeah, I know, sorry. Looking for you. I just have to tell you, my heart is bursting with Pride, and I get very emotional, I'm sorry, but my God, these awards are just incredible. And not only you students, but your parents, those, those of you who are fortunate enough to have parents that support you, a perfect score. I mean, that's just incredible. And just these, I'm just overwhelmed with the level of accomplishment you kids have, 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 have accomplished. And I just needed to say that. And if you've got parents that are supporting you, make sure you reach out to them and tell them how, how important it was that they were there to support you. Give them a hug. Thank you. I know that you may all want to stay because we have riveting business coming before the board. <laughs> and you're more than welcome to stay. However, perhaps there's homework that needs to be done or other things that you might want to do. So at this time, I'll entertain a, a brief hiatus in the meeting so that you folks can leave if you wish. The next order of business is public comment. And um, we have one person that has signed up for public comment. That would be Holly Adams. So if that individual would like to come to the microphone and just state your name and your address, please. Hi, I'm Holly Adams from 35 Sylvan Avenue. And I'm here tonight for a number of reasons, but mostly because I love children and want to help to write injustices that I see being done to them. Number one being this nonsensible mask mandate. The, the science and effectiveness of masks simply does not support mandating masks. Many public and private schools around the country have not mandated masks and have shown there's absolutely been no recorded difference between masked or unmasked schools COVID numbers. I also see unmasked children all around town happily playing or walking together after school. 
So why are these children forced to live the lie? While in school, mask up, and when you're home with friends, unmask. I understand the Board of Education is following recommendations and dictates from the governor, CDC, and other self-proclaimed COVID authorities, all filtering down from the top. I'm not sure why we'd have to implement these recommendations, whether it's liability or money related, but it's leaving the most important people out of the loop, the children and their parents. Shouldn't we, as a community, work together with our local health department, Board of Ed teachers, and the Board of Ed teachers and the parents? Why are we readily accepting and implementing arbitrary and senseless orders coming down from on high? Parents, teachers, Board of Ed members, and nurses have always been able and encouraged to work together on the children's behalf. Why have parents been ignored at this time? I suspect there's more playing into this problem, such as the present day political narratives fostered by Democrat Party along with our schools public un and public unions funding them. It's so sad that everything always comes back to money Maybe that explains what most of us can see, but refuse to talk about. The elephant in the room. I'm sure it's our good teachers and Board of Education members. If they weren't afraid of getting shunned by their peers or fired for speaking out, they'd be more than happy discussing the pros and cons of masking children critical race theory, 1619 project, transgenderism, planned parent initiatives, abortion, and a multitude of other controversial subjects being infiltrated into public schools without parents' knowledge. Is this all because of public unions and politics? And anyone who feels like speaking out to protect the, to protect the children and against the new program that's been filtered down from the top, can't speak of it without fear of intimidation and dismissal? Has Attorney Mer General Merrick Garland's son-in-law's panorama education already been introduced and implemented here in Wallingford? I'd like to know and voice my concerns or objections, if any. Please, Board of Ed members, parents, grandparents, we're not enemies, but we're just people trying to work with you. I think we need to examine and question with candid discussion while shining a light for all parties involved before subjecting children, especially K through eighth grade, to controversial and perhaps dangerous subject matter. Please, let's put our heads together and talk about the elephant in the room. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for your I, comments. And I, it seemed un inappropriate after that beautiful, beautiful <laughs> awards. I mean, I, I'm so happy I got to see that. So. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussion of agreement for Educational Administrators Association of Wallingford 2022 to 2025, um, discussion of appointment of candidates for teaching positions, and discussion of acceptance of resignations. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ross, second by Mrs. Allenson. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. We're in executive session. I'll entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved, Autumn Allenson. Mrs. Allenson, is there a second to the motion? I'll second. 
Mrs. Raccio, discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. We are out of executive session. I'll entertain a motion to approve consent agenda item 7.1 to 7.27. So moved. Moved Sorry. by Mrs. Allenson, seconded by Mr. Ross. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion has carried. There were no items removed from the consent agenda, so we're on to correspondence. Mr. Ross? I have none at this time. We had no correspondence for this month. Very well then. Committee reports. The ACES Governing Board met on November 18, 2021. The minutes of the October 14, 2021 meeting were approved. During the Executive Director's report, Mr. Jason Haro gave a presentation on the Helen Doran International Preschool and Kindergarten Program, the U.S. National Flagship Program for Early Childhood Spanish Language Learning at ACES. Mr. Cook presented the Human Resources Report. There are 28 new staff members and 23 resignations. Mr. Cook indicated that 90 staff members are unvaccinated, but that 91% of staff members have been vaccinated. The teacher residency program is recruiting for the next cohort. The Governing Board approved the filing of the fiscal report subject to audit, the Human Resources Report, and the early Head Start updates. The curriculum and instruction report was shared in writing. Under new business, the Governing Board approved the rates for services and tuitions for 2022-2023. The Governing Board also approved the non-bargaining compensation package effective July 1, 2022. This group of 101 employees will receive a 2.75% general wage increase, no step increase, and health and dental premiums will be at 19%, with a wellness discount of 3% available with proof of evidence of adherence to wellness plan guidelines. The next ACES Governing Board meeting is scheduled for December 9th, 2021. Uh, moving on to committee reports, business think tank, Mrs. Castelli. Uh, our meeting was canceled um, so that we can enhance the meeting to allow for more uh, participation. I don't know if uh, Mrs. Belizzi wants to add anything to, to that. Yeah, so they are working uh, and looking at, I'm actually going to meet with Mr. Mira. Um, I know he contacted me today trying to set up a meeting uh, before the next meeting so that we can look at the structure and set up some things. So we are working on it. I know Mr. Covey is working on it as well. So we're looking to change the structure a little bit just so that we can bring in different um, different groups of people and it not be dominated just by one area, but to broaden it and to have more focuses um, spread out and each meeting focus on different areas. So we're gonna look at what that's gonna look like moving forward. Okay. STEM Steering Committee, Mrs. Allenson. There was no meeting. Thank you. System-wide PTAC update. Mrs. Latour. So at our, our regularly scheduled November meeting, we had uh, discussions regarding community events that were shared with the group. It was a nice opportunity to share the things that are going on across the town so that each local PTAC could share them with their own respective schools. A subcommittee was formed to review policy 1110.3 bylaws for PTAC. The subcommittee will review um, the policy, which is about 10 years old, to make recommendations to the policy committee uh, for their review. Ms. Belizzi provided an update on uh, district-wide uh, events, such as uh, the progression of locker use at the middle school, high school, uh, the continuing efforts related to transportation, and the upcoming vaccination clinics for our five to 11-year-olds. Our next meeting is December 21st at 6 p.m. and it will be held virtually. Minutes um, are on the website for anyone who would like to read them. And we look forward to seeing anyone who would like to attend in December. Thank you. Special Education PTEC update, Ms. Turner. Good evening. Oh, the last meeting we had was on November 4th. 
we went through a state training on the new IEP. So we discussed the laws behind IEPs and some of the statutes. We also introduced parents to the new format of the IEP and what it's going to look like starting July 1st. It was well received and uh, we will have future trainings for parents who did not attend this one. We are extremely excited for our next meeting on December 2nd, 2021 at 6 o'clock. This is available for all parents um, and teachers in the system. We are having Debbie Silver, uh, who is the author of this book, Fall Down Seven Times, Get Up Eight. She is a um, nationally known author who works with teachers and parents on how to provide your children with the skills to succeed. So how to overcome, how to persevere. And we really felt during this time following COVID, a lot of our um, children are really struggling with getting back into the swing of things. They struggled a lot, just getting used to school again. Debbie is humorous. She's practical. She'll come up with all the, um, a lot of really good suggestions on how to support your children. So we're really encouraging all families to attend. It is virtual. So just reach out to me and we can send you the link for that session. Uh, that's all we have for now. Thank you. Plan of Conservation Development, Mr. Reynolds. Okay, thank you. And Food Services Strategic Plan Committee, Mr. Bondi and Mrs. Purcell. So the Food Service Strategic Planning Committee met on November 10th. Um, our main goal this year is, is to try to implement breakfast in the elementary school. Um, and to that extent, we mapped out a framework or a template for planning. There are so many moving parts um, to try to get breakfast in the elementary schools that uh, it's kind of like a puzzle. So we're mapping everything out, in the process of mapping everything out. And then uh, the second thing we did was uh, identify some of the major issues. Um, we looked at everything and came up with uh, um, about 10 or 12 major issues. Um, our next, at our next meeting, we'll try to um, figure out some... Um, solutions to those issues, and we will also be in the near future um, polling the, uh, the principals and uh, everyone else involved to get their ideas and uh, other problems that we probably have not even thought of. Um, I'm sure they're out there, so um, we're going to keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bondi. I don't believe there's any old business to come before the board, so we'll move on to the instructional committee with Mrs. Purcell and Mr. Reynolds, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, 12.1, approval of appointment of candidate for teaching position. I make a motion that the Board of Education approve the appointment of the following candidates to a teaching position for the 2021-2022 school year, contingent upon proper Connecticut certification is recommended by the superintendent of schools. Pup uh, pupil personnel services, special education teacher, Christiana DeLuccio, and uh, arts program at Lyman Hall and Sheehan, social studies, Jamie Giuliano. Second the motion. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays, abstentions? Motion's approved. 12.2, approval of acceptance of resignation. I make a motion that the Board of Education accept the resignation of Megan D'Angelico, effective December 17, 2021. Megan D'Angelico has been a school social worker since August 2021. Second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Abstentions? Motion carries. I think I turn the next part over to Ms. Latour. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to give a big shout out to our policy committee for the efforts and for all of the group hanging in. We've been meeting twice a month and are making extremely good progress with the work that we have to do related to the CABE audit that we did um, last spring. 
Our first batch of 15 policies and regulations were approved off of consent this evening. So nice work, everybody. And our next batch, this is the second read for all of these policies. Um, they are largely in the area of community relations and business and non-operations. So um, the first one is policy 1120, public participation at Board of Education meetings. After the first read, there was one comment to add addition, additional language to uh, number five that I just said it is requested that all charges or complaints against employees shall be submitted to the Board of Education, bless you, under provisions of Board Policy 1312 Public Complaints. I just felt it was nicer to request than just dictate. So again, we had to strike a lot of item number five because we cannot, once a public forum is created, we cannot dictate what is said. Are there any other recommended changes that the Board would like to make upon the second read? Um, 12.4, presentation, a second read of policy 1325, advertising and high school athletic facilities. We are modifying this policy to just talking about advertising and promotion. No changes were recommended after the first read. Does anyone have any concerns at all related to the second read? Changes of language recommended. Uh, 12.5 is policy 1110.2, parent portal acceptable use and safety. There were no changes recommended after the first read. Does anyone have any recommended language changes they would like to make for the second read? 12.6 is revisions to regulation C19A, use of facial coverings in school. We had to update this policy just based on a few different um, things related to this particular school year. So really minor language changes that you'll see in your physical copy on page one. Uh, Mrs. Castelli requested in the third paragraph we change whether or not to when. On page two in section D, we modified the six feet to three feet. Um, page four, we took out the whole consequence chart, leaving it up to the building administration to administer consequences for unacceptable mask use. Um, under their discretion. And then on pages six, seven, six and seven, we changed the name from Dr. Menzo to Ms. Belizzi as the change of superintendent. We added guardians next to parents under name and address when looking at exemptions and changed the date for when the consent form would expire. Does anyone have any other changes that they would like to recommend? Yes, I just Chairman. want to make a comment that um, on those rare occasions when you see an actual name in the policy, it's because it's been advised legally, I believe, right? Correct. That we have those names in the policy. We understand this does cause us to have to revisit policies from time to time when there's a change in personnel, but this is based on legal advice. Right, and in this particular policy about facial coverings, it was prudent to list the specific name, and you'll see the specific name under our Title IX policies as well, other than just the title. Next policy is 12.7, policy 1111.3, public access. If we access. could just go back to that one. Sure. Um, because I noticed that um, under the, um, the form, for some reason, uh, it does not have care of, uh, Danielle Belizzi in that section. Which one? Which um, at the bottom of page seven. So I struck out Dr. Menzo but forgot to put Ms. Belizzi? Is that what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Uh, for there. some reason it's not on mine, so. Oh. Hmm. Don't there. know why. I will make sure for the consent for version it has okay. the right name. Thank you. Thank you. There, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <Weird>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next one is the public access channel message, message board. There were no language changes uh, based on the first read. Um, does anyone have any recommended changes for the second read? 12.8, policy uh, 1322, contest for students with a corresponding regulation. There were no language changes recommended after the first read for the policy or the regulation. Does anyone have any concerns for the second read that they would like to bring up or change? 
Policy 12.9, presentation of proposed revisions for policy 1250, visitors to the schools, and the corresponding regulation. Um, in the first version, a lot of the regulation was included in the policy, so I just struck that out. There were no actual language changes re um, recommended after the first read, and the regulation stands as, as proposed. This is a model policy from Shipman Goodwin. Um, and while we did update this policy last year as a policy committee, we did like the Shipman Goodwin version a little bit better, and it was a little bit more inclusive to um, evaluations or observations that took place in the school other than just plain um, visitors. Uh, does anyone have any recommendations for language changes in the second read? Okay. Item 12.10, policy 3130, budget transfer authority. We utilized language from the actual statute. There were no language recommendations or changes after the first read. Does anyone have any concerns or language changes that they would like to recommend for the second read? Item 1211, presentation of policy 3432, annual budget. The only thing I struck out was at the bottom of page one, where I, I ended the sentence after a legislative body, no, mu municipality, and then I took out uh, the fact that we don't have a town meeting or a board of selectmen. So this is language that is from the model policy. Does anyone have any questions or changes of language recommended for the second read. 12.12, policy 3541.23, bus contractor. I did add to section four, uh, the contractor and his or her drivers will be required to comply with the laws, rules, and regulations set forth by the state of Connecticut, the State Department of Motor, Motor Vehicles, the Wallingford Board of Education, I added the State Board of Education and the state and local police departments. Does anyone have any questions or additions to language that they would like to make for the second read? Policy 3524.2, Green Cleaning Program. This is language that was provided by Shipman Goodwin in terms of the update. Um, there were no changes recommended after the first read. Does anyone have any concerns or changes of language that they would like to recommend for the second read? Policy 3171.1, non-lapsing fund. There were no language changes recommended after the first read. We made minor changes to update legal references and change the 1% to 2%. Um, no changes uh, of language for the second read. Does anyone have any concerns or language changes that they're recommending for the second read? And then for 1215, uh, we're proposing, this is the second time we're proposing it, the deletion of policy EI, which is insurance, and policy IA, which is the district mission statement instructional goals. Policy committee felt that these were either redundant or not needed. Does anyone have any concerns with the deletion of those two policies? Okay, so uh, for this month, all of these will um, reappear in the December meeting under consent, and you will have a whole new batch uh, of second reads to review after getting them presented at the December instructional committee meeting. Okay, thank you. That concludes. Back to you. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Purcell. Mrs. Levesque, sorry. Yes. Can we just double check to make sure we approved both of the teachers? We did. did yes. We do both of them. They were okay. they were together in oh, the they same were together. motion. Okay, perfect. I, maybe I just didn't hear it. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. I mean to interrupt. I just wanted to double no, check. No, it's, it's thank good you. to clarify. Thank <laughs> you. Um, thank you, Mrs. Purcell, and thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Um, on to the operations committee, and I believe um, Mrs. Castelli ran that meeting, and also Mrs. Allenson. No, she wasn't there. No, no, but I just like <laughs> she to was she was in vacation. I just yeah. like yeah. to recognize that both <laughs> okay. of you are on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surfing? Is that what you're doing? I, I, I was on vacation. Mm -hmm. Celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, at our uh, operations committee meeting of November eighth. Mr. Barone reported that there was an increase of $637,000 in the surplus projection from last month due mainly to tuitions. 
the total surplus projection at this point is $1,650,000. The consensus of the operations committee was to send this uh, financial report uh, to the full board for approval. Mr. Bondi reported that there was, that there were 20 servings, serving days in October. There was a surplus of $86,513 for the month of October with an average of 3,376 meals served per day. The cash flow analysis through November is estimated to be a surplus of 11,707. The average participation for all of the schools is 62.2%. Consensus of the operations committee was to send this report along to uh, uh, the October uh, board meeting to uh, be approved by the board. <coughs> the, Mr. Deptula then reported on some of the projects that they're working on for uh, the uh, maintenance and facilities. Uh, there's timeout rooms at Mary G. Fritz School, new propane tanks at Mark T. Sheehan, replacing the t gas tanks at the warehouse and the Lyman Hall soft softball field renovation. The portable air conditioners project for staff and students has been completed. We then went on to um, address a letter, a potential letter to the governor with respect to our parents who had, have come to some of our meetings requesting that uh, we do so in, in respect to unmasking our kids. We, uh, we, we talked about it great, uh, at, at some length and ca uh, our nurse coordinator, Ms. Nielsen, Nilan, excuse me, was present to provide information and answer any questions. There was concern about how teachers would monitor this if it were to pass uh, when some children would, would be wearing a mask and others would not be. It, would be. it was then suggested that the topic be presented to a PTAC meet, to the PTAC meeting um, for their consideration. We then took consensus um, not to send a letter to the governor. <laughs> and lastly, we uh, talked about the potential high school project discussion. Uh, Mrs. Belizzi spoke about the potential high school project. She provided a recap of what had been done so far. A study was conducted regarding consolidating the two high schools. A representative from the state recommended that two options should be provided. The representative who made this recommendation has since retired. It was suggested to have a meeting with the new state representative to make sure that a second study is necessary, because of course there's a cost associated with that, and then form a committee to, to, for this issue. It was also suggested that this item be added to the operations committee agenda each month, so it'll be on an ongoing basis. We'll talk about it. That's it. Thank you, Mrs. Castelli. Um, Mrs. Raccio. Um, since that meeting, I did get some questions from parents about the timeout room, because there's very specific requirements around a timeout room versus a sensory room. So can we elaborate on exactly what that's going to be used for at Fritz? Absolutely. It is going to be a sensory room. Um, the building did have a sensory room. Uh, in years since they've had it, things have changed, and the room had been purposed for different reasons. Um, so we are looking to make sure that we have a dedicated sensory room in the building. Um, so Mr. Deptula has been working with Mr. Carbone and Mrs. Turner to make sure that we have that space. So they in the, are in the process of putting back a sensory room. It is not a timeout room, it is a sensory room uh, to make sure that the students have access to that in the building. Um, so that is what they're working on right now and it should be hopefully completed shortly. Um, so Mr. Deptool is working on that. Any other remarks? Thank you, Mrs. Castelli. Um, new business, I don't believe we have any, so we're on to the administrative report with Superintendent Belizzi. Good evening, everyone. Um, this was a wonderful start to the evening this evening with all of our uh, presentation of awards for our students. It's quite remarkable to see all of their accomplishments thus far. Um, it's very exciting and it was such a nice positive vibe, I have to say, um, to welcome all of them here and to celebrate all of their successes. So hopefully we can continue to do that as best we can throughout the year. So what a great start to the evening tonight. Um, this month has been very busy. I wanted to kind of highlight some of the things that have been happening. Uh, this month I had an opportunity to attend both of the uh, Lyman Hall and Sheehan National Honor Society events. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity to see our students, uh, to take part in the ceremony, to 
uh, share that experience with the inductees and with their families. It was a wonderful celebration in both high schools, um, and it was a job well done for all of them. So it was a lovely celebration to see that. All of our schools did um, honor our veterans in their own way. So it was lovely to see um, how each building did something a little bit different, either virtual or in person, sent in pictures. Um, our high schools did it through um, learning experiences within their classes, but each school did in their own way honor all of our veterans, which was wonderful to acknowledge that as we moved through. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the, um, the partnership that we had with Griffin Hospital. Um, starting on November 13th, we had a clinic um, held at Lyman Hall High School for our five to 11 year olds for vaccinations if parents so choose to bring their children there. And then this past Saturday, we had it on the other side of town at Sheehan. Um, both were very successful, so we were excited about that. Uh, parents will be able to come back in three weeks, one side of town at Lyman Hall, if that's where you started, and then three weeks from this past Saturday at Sheehan for their second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. So we will continue to partner with them and move forward as we go through. Um, and I wanted to share that we've had an opportunity to update some of our uh, vaccination rates for our students. So as we're kind of moving through this process with COVID and the pandemic, and we're continuing with our, uh, our layered, excuse me, mitigation strategies, I did wanna share some of our, um, our rates that we have so far. Our nurses have access through the state um, to find out exactly our numbers for each of our buildings. So as of right now, we know that Lyman Hall, we have approximately 601 students that are fully vaccinated. And that's out of an enrollment of 973 students. So it's a pretty good percentage. Um, for Sheehan, we have approximately 458 out of an enrollment of 754. In Moran, we're at 228 students with an enrollment of 571. In DAG, we're at approximately 211 with an enrollment of 623. Remembering at the um, middle schools, that availability for many of those students just happened recently. So we're hoping that as we go through, those numbers will continue. And it's important because uh, it does help with when our students are considered a close contact with whether or not they have to quarantine and what that process looks like for them. Uh, the state did give recently the option for districts to choose to have uh, or implement the screen and stay option. We did uh, pursue that option and we have been implementing it. We've had to tweak it along the way as we go a little bit, because um, as we're implementing it, we're learning things about the process um, and what, you know, what areas we need to kind of focus on a little bit more. Um, I do wanna share that as we've been interview, um, implementing it for the past week or so, uh, while it is a lot to explain to parents, uh, the benefit of it is it does keep our children in school in the classrooms. So if they have no symptoms, but they're considered a close contact, they can stay in the classrooms and monitor their symptoms. Obviously, if things change, then they have to, um, you know, they stay home if they're not feeling well. But I do think when I looked at the close numbers of, you know, just a comparison as of last Friday, um, just for the one week of implementing it, we were able to keep approximately 115 students in their classrooms throughout the grades. Um, the biggest impact happening in our elementary, where it was a 60, 65 children were able to stay in their classrooms while implementing that screen and stay. So to me, that's a huge win for us. I know it's a long process. I understand it's a lot for parents to understand, but in the big picture, the focus of keeping those kids in their classrooms when they're well, uh, and getting that live in-person instruction is very large. So uh, we'll continue to you know, monitor how it goes. We're gonna watch the rates, the positivity rates, because they are increasing. Um, we are seeing an increase here in our district. Uh, we went from, you know, at the beginning of the month of November to one case a week. I think then we went up to six. Last week, we were up to 24 cases in a week. Um, just since Saturday, we're up to nine cases. So we are seeing the increase. Um, we're hopeful for the holidays that we don't see as many, but even at that, we're still keeping a lot of our kids in our classrooms, which is our primary focus. So we're gonna continue to move forward with that. Um, I did have a very positive meeting with our middle school and high school administrators in terms of lockers. I know we've discussed the locker use here. Um, 
We are hopeful and the, the administration from both the middle schools and the high schools will communicate out to families that we are looking to implement the locker use starting Monday after we come back from Thanksgiving. So November 29th will be the first day that students, if they choose, uh, can use their lockers. The um, building administrators have worked on a plan to make sure they're monitoring the students in the hallway, they're keeping their masks on, um, and that they're not you know, too crowded together, too clumped together as they're using their lockers. Uh, at the middle school, they had to work on some time to practice using the lockers, to go through um, the codes and making sure they understood how to use the lockers. Um, there was some discussion at our system-wide PTAC meeting, uh, especially at the middle school level, what if the students didn't want to use the lockers? What if they, because since they've gotten comfortable with the backpack, um, do they have to use the lockers? And the answer was no. I did have a lengthy discussion with the middle school administrators about that fact. There may be some anxiety the other way of rushing to get the locker open, not having enough time to practice, and not wanting to use it. So it is not something that we're going to push on everyone that they have to use it. It's available to them to put their coats away and other items as we move through the winter. So that's a work in progress, and we'll see how that goes as well. Um, one other thing we talked about, and it was mentioned, Mrs. Latour mentioned it, was um, the buses. We're continuing to monitor the buses. We're continuing to work with uh, Durham Bus Company regarding the late buses and the drivers. Uh, we are setting up a meeting with them shortly to revisit how it's going with them, what things we can do to support them, to help them with finding more drivers. Uh, so we're continuing to monitor that. There was a discussion regarding a bus app. Um, they do have the ability right now to, uh, all their equipment is installed, their Zonar equipment is installed. We just have to meet with them now to discuss if that's a way we want to go, what that app would look like. I know there's been some concerns about privacy issues and how much information will it tell us. So we're hopeful that when we meet with them again, we'll be able to provide more information with that. And last, we are all looking forward to the Powder Puff game on Wednesday um, at 2.30, so we will dress warm, I think, um, to make sure, but we are looking forward to it um, and for a wonderful Thanksgiving break. So I hope all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well, and we're welcoming the break as well. Yeah, so we are going to um, set up a meeting with the Durham Bus Company to further discuss the bus app. So students uh, and families... Um, and if we choose to go this way, it's in the beginning stages of discussion. Um, there is an app that we can have our parents log into that is secure, that will um, give them information on the bus that their child is on and what stop they're at in real time. But the things I want to understand a little bit deeper is I haven't seen it. I don't know privacy issues wise, um, what the password looks like. So it's beginning stages of that. Uh, and I want to look into how, we all want to look into how much information that will give us before we definitely move into that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Superintendent Belizzi. We're on to announcements. Monday, December 6, 2021, there'll be an instructional committee meeting via Google Meet at 6.30 p.m. Monday, December 13, 2021, there'll be an operations committee meeting via Google Meet at 6.30 p.m. The date of our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be Monday, December 20th, 2021, right here in the Robert F. Parisi Town Council Chambers at 6 p.m. If there is no further business of an official nature to come before the board this evening, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Mr. Ross, seconded by Mr. Reynolds. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much.